<laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Gotham City Sirens. This is Shelby, Kimberly, and me, Brooke. Of course, we have an alter ego. Because I say yours, Catwoman. Poison Ivy. And Harley Quinn. That's what on my shirt. <laughs> so today we're going to convince you of why you should watch our channel. We've got lots of really cool comics that we're keeping up to date with. Mm -hmm. So we've got all sorts of really cool up-to-date stuff for you guys to check out. So we're going to start with a really brief run-through of all the issues we're following. You yeah. want to start, Shelby? Uh, sure. All right, I'm going to start talking about Aquaman because, you know what, as much as hate as Aquaman gets, he really shouldn't because he's like, the most <laughs> big-ass dude, I, like, ever. He's, I, nobody should hate Aquaman. You should just give him a try. Just, there. Along those lines, uh, New 52 has been really good to Wonder Woman also. Um, to be honest, I've tried to read Wonder Woman many times in some of the older issues. Could not ever finish a novel, nothing. And <laughs> <So> this, <true. laughs> they just do play her way to something. And this is really great at showing kind of the Diana side of her, but also the Wonder Woman side. And it's been really good. I really like how they draw the villains and stuff. I love too. it. Love I just it. love how they draw it in general. Yeah, the art the is art fantastic. Is mm -hmm. Love it. Another cool thing that's been out and about is Gossamer. I totally <laughs> dig it. It's about this boy who has a special gift for math and is able to transport in a different world. So that is Finding Gossamer. It's very cool. Did you just say special gift for math? Yeah, he does math problems and he's able to do all sorts of cool things like healing people's injuries and going to parallel universes. It's pretty <laughs> cool stuff. So I would definitely check it out. It's Another awesome indie find. Wobble Yonder. If you're into the more steampunk thing, this is the cool. <laughs> I need to find another word to explain stuff. Um, it's really edgy. It's really dark. Um, very sapia coloring. It it's mainly focusing on the world's being destroyed and everybody has to go up to the sky and fuel's getting low and it's just it's really interesting for a, a first issue. I would definitely keep reading it. But yeah, if you're into steampunk, this would definitely be your thing. It's very gritty, so it, if you like Batman and steampunk. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> to uh, brighten up a little, but not too much, we have Stuff of Legend. Uh, it's about a boy in um, who gets sucked into his closet by the boogeyman, um, and his toys all come to life and come to save him. So a little bit of a mix between Toy Story and Monsters, Inc. <laughs> I would say so. It sounds cute. It is not it's cute. Not it is very bad. It's <laughs> very violent. The artwork is great. It's great. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. The dialogue is wonderful. Um, they have how many books do they have out now? Ooh, they've got three written books that are out. Um, and there's uh, and the other ones are going issue by issue right, right. now. So, yeah, so you can get it on the bus if you want. Definitely pick that's this up. the boogeyman. This is the boogeyman. Very scary. Just wait till you see the teeth. Oh yeah, right. super cool art. I actually indulged and got a, a piece of original art by him. It's very very cool. Good <laughs> choice. That's great. Oh yeah. So another thing that I love the art on, going off of Stuff of Legends, is Frankenstein Alive Alive. It is super duper indie in my opinion. Um, <laughs> I couldn't even find issue one for months. And it finally came in and I was snatched them up and they're like, you are so lucky because this thing is going to sell out like crazy. Because um, they don't do that many prints of it. But the artwork is absolutely breathtaking. Basically the premise of this is that Frankenstein comes back alive from what you probably would get in the title. Um, but he comes back modern day. So it's somewhat modern day. So he's like entering circuses to make a living and things like that. And it's But it still stays true to his rest roots and so I really enjoy this series. There's only two issues out so far but they're equally as awesome. Uh, this one I only got for a dollar at a Comic Con so sometimes I'm trying to sell out of them because the number two issue you can't really do anything with unless there's a number one. So very cool stuff. I would definitely check out that series. All right back to the mainstream stuff. <laughs> Red Hood and the Outlaws. Um, I really like what they're doing with it right now. Um, just to hold Jason and Starfire and, and Roy's aspect to the whole storyline and it's really good to see what they're doing with it um not really happy happy with what they're doing with jason but again i'm kind of biased and i <laughs> i, I, I love jason <laughs> so it, we'll see how it goes i'm not usually happy with when they end <laughs> and i just need more but it, it's really good <laughs> um we've also agreed that she kind of looks like this weird serpent person on the cover yeah Kind of lucky. The illustrations inside aren't so. No, they're like not. That. Yeah, yeah. Actually, but the covers. Borderline Hawkeye project. Just I a think. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hawkeye Initiative. Hawkeye Initiative. That's right. <laughs> 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 to stick with.
with the mainstream kind of, we have Talon. And this is really awesome because it goes into the Court of Owls, how it works. And um, one of the guys who they pick to be the next Talon who just totally is not okay with their operating system and just is trying to take down the whole thing. So it's great. I love it. And I really like Tomasi as a writer in general. And so, of course, you know, things have shifted in the DC universe with his original series. <laughs> so he's got to go somewhere else. So now he's doing the Batman and etc. <laughs> um, so they've all been pretty good. <laughs> they focus on the individual relationships that Batman has with each character. Um, and some surprising and interesting things pop up. Most recent one, Batman and Catwoman. There's nothing really interesting going on in my opinion, <laughs> but for example, Batman and Red Hood, intense stuff. So I definitely would recommend still sticking with the series despite despite the na slight name change that's going on each month. <laughs> okay, uh, to stick with the Marvel universe, um, we have yes. Deadpool. Mm -hmm. um, and so for those of you who are both comic book nerds <laughs> and literature <laughs> nerds, this is the perfect thing for you. Um, mm -hmm. It's called Killustrated. Um, basically, he goes into um, different uh, literary classics. Um, so this one is obviously Moby Dick. Um, we also have uh, Tom Sawyer. Oh, Thank yeah. you, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> uh, Sherlock Holmes, Christmas Carol. It's great. And the um, whitewashed fence does not stay whitewashed. No, it does not long. stay whitewashed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what I really love about this, he is always breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> so meta. And if you want to continue that meta series, um, Colin Bunn has also come out with Deadpool Kills Deadpool. So the epitome <laughs> of meta is encountered in this series. Um, the first issue just recently came out, but there's many more to come, and I'm really excited about the adventures of Deadpool killing Deadpool. Should be good stuff. Poor Deadpool. I know. <laughs> we all kind of wanted to say a little bit something about that girl. True. Because <laughs> what they started do doing with her in the new 52, um, in case you haven't known, I guess spoilers, it's been a while, but... She is no longer in her wheelchair, and she's actually back Miracle girl again. operations. Um, so she can walk. She just, I don't know, I found, and I think you guys agree with me, she just gets really whiny. It's like she lost all of her character development that they had with her in Oracle, and she just kind of went downhill. But um, I found in these latest issues that she was getting better. Yeah. Maybe it was a phase. I remember her first issue back, she was like, well, am I ready for this? Am I not ready for this? <laughs> Should I actually punch this guy in the face because she's about to punch me? She was no, talking to herself him. a lot. Yep, it it was, a lot. No. It it's cool when Nick Grayson talks to himself. Like, that's mm -hmm. normal. Somehow. But well, She was, like, over-talkative. Yeah. And you also made a comment, too, like, maybe it's DC forcing Gail Simone to write like this. Possibly. Because... Yeah, because when I read um, the annual with Catwoman and Batgirl, um, yeah, I really like how she writes Catwoman. I, I really dig it. Um, but yeah, Tomasi seemed to kind of imitate the same tone with the narrative, mm -hmm. which was interesting to me. Like, the dialogue was a little different, but I don't know if he was imitating her style or if DC was telling him to write like that, but I will certainly ask him at Comic-Con if he's there. <laughs> so, um, another series, Arkham Unhinged, is pretty cool if you're a fan of the video game, which I'm a huge fan of. By fan, she actually means like super, super fan because her Harley yeah. outfit is actually That's the true. <laughs> <laughs> My Harley outfit is the Arkham City one. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty fun. <laughs> I'm two Riddler trophies short of getting all those like 450 <laughs> ones. I was frustrating the heck out of me. I can't do it. I'm unhinged. I read too far into it. My brother is keeping up with it very, very closely, but I really dig it. Definitely um, kind of enlightens that universe. Um, another one I just randomly picked up today, Legends of Oz, the Scarecrow. I know there's the Legends of Oz, the Wild West, but I really like this one. It's basically, there's people walking around that are scarecrows that can be manipulated, but there are evil scarecrows that have stolen people's brains, so it's kind of a neat little thing. And then my final one that I like to talk about is the green team. I'm kind of torn on this because they do mix the DC universe a lot with, as you can see, with uh, with Slade on there. Um, so I kind of think that's cool. Um, I really love the first issue. The second issue, when the dude had an old Batmobile that he bought, wasn't a huge fan of that. And it's getting better. The third, I'm glad I stuck with the third issue, but definitely <laughs> a cool thing to check out. Basically, a bunch of rich kids that have enough money to be play superhero, and it's cool to kind of see how that unwinds a little bit. The Batman: The Dark Knight. Did you want to talk about that slightly? Oh, with the Mad Hatter. Yeah, we only followed the Mad Hatter series. Oh, we yeah. haven't gone beyond uh, that. So, uh, but... uh, I haven't read it yet. But it's very <laughs> creepy. Would you recommend reading it, Shelby? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, it was just really interesting to see what they did with with the Mad Hatter. Like he, you know. 
the animated series and all the other parts, he's still kind of like that. He's just a little bit fluffy. He's always kind of stupid. You're mm. like, oh, okay, it's the Mad Hatter. But they literally took it to the next, maybe the next two levels. Unbelievably creepy. Yeah. You're reading it and you're like, what? Especially when they got these, like, help me. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's a part where it's just uh, <laughs> mind boggling. <laughs> I was reading it, and I had to look at Brooke, and I was like, what the F is this? <laughs> what am I reading? What is this? <laughs> okay, the last one I want to talk about is Mouse Guard. Um, it's kind of Redwall-ish, but um, these mice are not just cute. They're very feisty and vicious. <laughs> feisty. They're adorable. The artwork is great. Um, the dialogue is beautiful. Um, I think the, the guy who writes it also he illustrates also does the art. Yeah. So he's, you know, just an all around genius, apparently. It's <laughs> great. I'm sorry. Three books yes. out. Um, they just started the first issue after that. I did not get it because I had the two additional books and I haven't read them yet. So I'm preventing <laughs> well, myself from getting that one. It. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's really fun. It's like, you're like, oh, you're so cute and fuzzy, and now you're stabbing someone. <laughs> now you're actually yeah. in the snake's mouth and like stabbing it with its bang. Yeah, the story is it it's the complex. First pages. <laughs> it's a good, you know, it's a it's a very in depth story. It is, you know, good history. They have maps, you know. So oh, totally. I love I love books and maps. <laughs> and then just the way he he made the world come to life, mm-hmm. just his his illustration style, his coloring, it, it's gorgeous. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, of course, we also follow um, the regular Batman series that Scott Snyder does. Of course, he kind of does them in, like, arches. Mm-hmm. So we are following the arches. <laughs> right now they're doing year zero, but we are following them. <laughs> you do that arch? We tend to share all of our comics, so if one of we us do. is waiting it, the other ones are probably waiting. So Whenever I explain that situation to people, they're like, what, what, what club is this? Club I'm is like, this? no, this is just us. <laughs> <laughs> go to the comic book store. It's cheaper and way funner. We're trying to expand it. Ironically enough, um, well, I don't know if ironically, but there's the three of us that are super into comics. My brother dabbles, but we're trying to, like, suck in our guy friends. It's not yeah. really working. It's not working. Yeah, it's not working. And it's funny because it's only been recently that we've actually indulged in our comic obsession, obsession where we've actually gone and bought comic books. Because I know I, I loved the whole Marvel DC universe since I was little. It's just, I never actually got into a comic book store. Yeah. <laughs> and blame it on Brooke. <laughs> Third Eye is wonderful. <laughs> they are so welcoming. But yeah, that's basically our comic obsessions in a nutshell. <laughs> um, so stay tuned to our awesome series where we talk about these amazing things. And of course, we'll dabble in other series too. Yeah. But it should be pretty fun. We're always open for suggestions. We love Oh yeah. Stuff. As you can tell, Brooke is super indie all the time. <laughs> I am. Like, indie yeah, comics. I'm like, this is unknown. Let's grab this. <laughs> But yeah, if you have any suggestions, you can um, go and email us at gmail.com. We'll probably have a pop-up that comes up here or there. Or there. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I post comments. Let us know what you think about our opinions and post yours too. Mm-hmm. And thank you for tuning into Gotham City Sirens. Yeah. <laughs> Live long and prosper, bitches. Oh. <laughs>